Okay, so uh, there are other important topics about the S corporation that um, needs of a, of attention that are typically on an, a Schedule C return, but now they're they are treated a little different when you do an S corp tax return. Let's go. The first one will be um, health insurance. Oh, well, health insurance. How is health insurance taken as a deduction in an S corporation? So. If this health insurance is for the officer, the health insurance premium will be added to the payroll, to this officer's payroll. It will not be subject to Social Security, Medicare tax, but it must be added as a line one on your payroll, on your W-2. Um, and that's how we st it's taken as a deduction. So. Um, let me show you how. So as a, as a W-2, the, the officer wages were 45. But we're also including this health insurance on that W-2. Um, so we're taking as... So his total deduction is 50,000, as you see here. Um, so 50,000 here is the wages for 45 and 5,000 for health insurance. Uh, which equals 50 as net profit so you're saying okay so we took the deduction here but we're adding we're taking it back on our personal return because this 50,000 needs to be reported on his personal return so now this 50,000 is added back as income on your tax return how are we taking the deduction so here is where you take the deduction you will take it online on your schedule one on your personal return schedule one line 60 so after you enter your um, your wages you also will enter your profits that you receive from your escort return so your escort um, yeah the escort return and on line 16 I'm sorry yeah like line 16 self-employment health insurance deduction is 5,000 so now your total income goes back to being 45,000 so that's where you tax on on the personal level that's what's important because that's where you're paying taxes on so on typically on a schedule C you will just have your profit and loss which it will be uh, business income here and on top of that you will do the same number uh, all in your personal tax return but for the s corporation instead of taking it as an additional item and on on this on the tax return you have to enter it on your w2 so when you run payroll make sure you let your payroll company know that you need to include this health insurance premium on your paychecks um, you have to let them know the amount every month so they run it with that amount as your as your income Okay, next, retirement deduction. Okay, so next will be a retirement deduction. The most popular is the SEP IRA for S corporations um, because it lets you take 25% of your W-2 income up to 57000 uh, as of a Schedule C, and Schedule C is your net profit times 25%, that's the max that you can take. But as an S, in an S corporation, it's 25% of your W-2 income. So you must, as an officer, you must run payroll for yourself of 20, um, and then you can take your SEP distribution of 25%. If you didn't run payroll, you cannot take this deduction. And this, you you can deduct it directly on your S Corp tax return. There's also solo 401k. You will just have to go on their website and because because they change every year as far as the percentage or the max that you can take. Uh, I know there's solo 401k. I know this SEP IRA. You can do it if you have if you don't have employees. Or if you have employees that are not with you for three years, 
and you can take it for yourself but if you have employees that they are with you with the business for more than three years then you have to offer them as well this retirement account um, but i will look into the regulations again because they change every year but the key here is to the takeaway is that you have to run payroll you have to run payroll and that's where your percentage will come from from your w2 income and that's where we take the step and it could be for this amount could be taken out for the following year so let's say we're 2019 and you don't know where your w2 income is or if you're going to have your employee for the next year um, that you have to offer him an uh, as a sep account then you can take it you can take this deduction on april or march 15 of the following year for 2019 so this that's what is good um to have those because it's also you're saving in, in taxes and putting money into your retirement account okay next home office so typically in a schedule c uh, you wait until the end of the year to make this calculation. But as, as, as an S corporation, you have to do this on a monthly basis. Why? Because you only do it when you're running payroll for the officer. So if you're running payroll, um, the officer, it's like the officer or the company is paying its employee for uh, working from their home, paying portion of their rent, um, where you know they're working so that's that's basically how this s corporation treats this home office it can be at the end of the year it should be on a monthly basis so we make the calculation the same way we'll do for the schedule c uh we look at the score footage of the home of the office space and then divided by by 12 and that's how much we should take every month as long as we're running payroll for the officer, that's how much we'll take in a month. And um, that will be a deduction on the tax return for the escort. So the escort is paying this to the officer, which if it's the same person, then, you know, it's going back on there for them to pay their rent. And you don't have to include this on their payroll, not like health insurance. It's, it will be just an expense. And yeah, the the person that's receiving it doesn't have to include it on their tax return as income either. So the number one audit flag for S corporations are officer compensation, which makes sense because the IRS is telling you that as an Schedule C sole prop, you pay self-employment taxes on your entire income. But if you form an S corporation, you choose how much of that net income you are going to pay self-employment self taxes on, which is what you run payroll for. So if you're not running payroll, then you're not paying any of the, of the self-employment taxes. That's why the, uh, the IRS audits those returns that are not running payroll for their officers. Um, so what is, what is reasonable? What is the... What does the IRS wants to see as a officer compensation? Um, so it's it is it varies depends on you know the area that you're in, what type of business you're in, uh, how many years you've been in business, the duties of the officer. Um, so for a rule of thumbs, it's for me for my clients. What I usually tell them, you know, the beginning of your business uh, we don't know if it's your first year as an escort we don't know how much your business is going to make this year COVID happened so you don't know if you should be running much in payroll or if your business is going to make any profits so I will start with you know 50% of what their wages or their income is for the year after expenses uh, even less just at the beginning, the first year. Then after that, we see where we add as far as the net income compared to the wages, and we adjust based on that. We add all this, you know, what are they doing for the business? 
how much money the people around them are making and so and so but it's important to uh, have your client run payroll for their corporation if they're the officers because this is the number one audit that um, they will look you know they run their report and they see s corporation they don't see anything on that line for wages for officers then they will audit that this return um, that's why also it's important to make sure to add this number if you're running wages for an officer but if you include it all in wages and salary rather than officer compensation that's another unnecessary audit flag that you can avoid by just being careful in separating those expenses okay, next distributions so if you're only a one shareholder to this corporation you it, it doesn't matter um, how much distribution you take as long as it's up to your earnings for the year but if there are two or more shareholders in this corporation and distributions are being taken out then we need to make sure that you're taking out distributions and giving it out to the shareholders based on their ownership um, so let's say this corporation for this year decided to take distributions up to a hundred thousand and it has two shareholders each of them owning 50 percent the distribution should be 50 50 thousand each um, and this is very important because if you allocate those uh, that distribution of a hundred thousand different than what their percentage for each ownership owner is then you are n not following the escort return rules and therefore uh, the IRS will if the IRS audits this return they will disallow the S corporation election and treat you as a C corp and take those distributions and tax them so that's what that's the beauty of being an S corporation the distributions are not taxable so as an S corporation you're you're taxed only in your net income whether you take the distributions out or you keep them on, on the business you're only taxed on the S on the net profit whereas a C corporation if you are you are taxed on a on the net profit plus any distributions that you give out to your shareholders that's why um, we want to take the, the S corporation rules as far as distributions. You only take distributions out based on the percentage of the shareholder. Again, if you're only one shareholder, you take 100% distribution and it doesn't matter how you divide it. But if you have one, more than two shareholders and you're giving out distributions to them, make sure you're giving them out based on their percentage. Okay next um you take as much distributions as needed just make sure you don't take too much distribution per year uh, it happens when there's more cash than what's on the net income so as you saw before we had a depreciation item that we enter as a journal entry that made our net profit less but our our it did not touch our cash portion our cash our bank so that's what we take distributions out. We take distributions out based on what's on the bank account. But if we're taking um, depreciation that it's not on our, um, that it was an actual a cash deduction, then we might have more cash and therefore we tend to take more distributions out that way. I will give you an example in the next slide. So this could happen also when you take a car loan um, and you're depreciating the entire amount and um, not cash had been paid out only the expenses taken as a depreciation it's basically the same thing that I talked to you about the depreciation but we're adding a loan to it for example we bought a car for sixty for $60 and we took out a loan for it for simplicity, that's the only expense we had for the year. 
So our girls was a hundred dollars depreciation. So we took depreciation on the entire car for sixty. So on our, our net income is forty dollars. So this should be our total distribution for the year. However, our car we took a, a loan for it instead of paying in cash. We took a loan. So our our liabilities is sixty, and we still have uh, our all our sales in cash in the bank of a hundred dollars so no cash was taken out for the car so we have a hundred dollars in the bank for distribution so this is what we we have available to distribute however our net income says that we only we can only distribute up to forty thousand because that's what we we have in quotation as income um because the depreciation is not, it's a non-cash item so if we distribute, end up distributing the hundred dollars, then we took out we took out a sixty dollars sixty dollars distribution additional to what what it was allowed. So the sixty dollars ends up being taxed as a, cap, a capital gains, um, even if you file as an S corporation tax return. That's why majority of um, so whenever you get a client that already done this and he comes the following year, what you can advise him is to treat this sixty thousand dollars additional distribution, and instead of doing it as a distribution, do it as a loan to shareholders. So eventually, this needs to be paid out by the by the shareholders back. So if they make any contribution to the business, they should be a paid out. Um, do a simple, um, a simple contract that says that the shareholder is gonna pay them back and put this on your balance sheet, on your, um, yeah, on your liability instead of doing it as a, an additional deduction again because you don't want to pay uh, additional capital tax on the distribution that could simply be adjusted on your balance sheet as a liability. It's a payable rather than a distribution. Hope this helped clarifying this.